side here. Uh, um, you're both in favour of remaining as parties, aren't you? Yes. That's correct. And for a people's vote, a second right. referendum. But why then not join together for a remain party? Why are you splitting the vote like this? Um, it's not necessary because the way that uh, MEPs are elected using the Dehont system means that it is more proportional than the first past the post system that we have for MPs. But also, although we agree on the EU, there are so many subjects on which we don't agree. And if we get a people's vote and if we stop Brexit, then we're electing... MEPs who represent <laughs> us in the European Parliament for five years, and but, don't we want to agree the, with them on other policies but too? But if, if you don't stop Brexit, then you know that you'll be serving for five minutes. Yes, but as James was saying, this isn't a proxy referendum. Well, you the see, it could be though. It, 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 it could be, couldn't it? it? In the eyes of many, it, it very much is a soft second referendum, and I think it's an absolute shame that the Liberal Democrats, the Green Party, and Change UK, despite our best efforts, couldn't all get together and put forward a Remain alliance. I don't alliance. know what this best efforts thing is about. The let, 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 keep let, saying finish. Let, let, let him finish. What was the offer from Vince Cable? Vince Cable um, sp reached out to the Green Party and no, to Change UK. True. Well, that's what Vince says. Uh, spoke out to the Green Party and Change UK and said, look, this is a potentially once-in-a-lifetime chance to show the strength of feeling in this country towards remaining and stopping Brexit. This is uh, this election will be fundamentally for, um, for Remain parties about stopping Brexit. Why don't we put politics to one side and actually come together, put forward okay. one slate of candidates, or we could carve up the regions? Let, let's come back on that because, because if, there is a very clear Brexit party, isn't there? And now led by Nigel Farage. Now, if people, if, if he wins a majority and the Remain vote is fragmented, that puts you in a far worse position, doesn't it? Why not? The Greens always say they want to work with others. You had the chance. The Greens are the most popular unequivocally Remain party in the South West. So we've got three times how many more... MP, how many MPs any, do you have we, in the South West? How many second places do you have in the South West? We've got three times more MPs than the Lib Dems do. In the South West? In the South West, we've got infinity in the, times more yeah, MPs than more the Lib MP. Dems do, because we have one and you have none. The incumbent Green MEP, Molly Scott Cato, has been doing a fantastic job for the last five years. As I said, yes, but we've got it's remaining thing, yeah, it's just, isn't it? Some people think it's astonishing that parties yeah. can't get together. And then you'd actually have a referendum. You want a referendum, it would be a referendum. We want I an actual referendum. I think it's a shame that we're referendum. having this argument and not working together to actually put forward the positive case for Remain, which we could be doing at this election, rather than just saying, well, we don't like you on this little bit, we, so we're not going to work okay. with you on we the most together, fundamental we'll move on issue. We work together say one where we election. agree. But there are issues where the Greens stand, apart from the other parties, on climate change, mainly. What's the difference between our policies on climate change? The Greens are for much more ambitious action on okay. climate change. In the European Parliament, the group that the Lib Dems sit in has blocked the okay. progressive we're, we're action Okay, we're going to talk about, talk about green issues a bit later on. It's about the extin extinction rebellion, uh, and particularly in the line of Bristol Airport's plans to expand. Now we've heard the voices of young people. Uh, should those plans immediately be chucked out? Mm. Well, I think, you know, we've talked about all the political disillusionment over the last few months. One thing that's given me hope in politics, I think a lot of people, is so many young people coming out to campaign on climate change, you know, mm. the biggest crisis really the world faces. And so I really do support the, uh, the young people that have been yeah. protesting against the expansion. I think that's a, that's a great thing to have done. You, what about the position of the Bristol uh, Labour mayor, though, who is in favour of airport expansion? So I think that... Obviously, it's really tricky when we have a country that has nine, had nine years of austerity. If you see something that will create jobs, that's where, you know, initially you want to go. But we do need to think more long term. We do need to think about the fact that we've got 10 years to okay. turn this economy around. Um, and so I do support those young people protesting. So you support the young people and you support the Bristol mayor? I understand why he's made that okay. decision. James? Um, I don't, uh, for me personally, this is the biggest crisis that is facing us now and for the next 10 years. We've got to be putting all our effort and all our energy, all our policy nows into this. I personally don't see how we can decarbonise capitalism, how we can adequately tackle the climate chaos by doubling the size of Bristol Airport. Right. I get the economic case of that, and I think it's a very... And, you know, I, at another time, maybe I would have been convinced by the economic case because it's very important to those jobs in South Bristol. But this is the number one crisis at the time. Okay. We can't afford to be just giving a little bit here. We've got to have radical action right. on Sorry this. Sorry to hurry you. Our time no, is no. so short today. James. The economy of Bristol and the South West is absolutely dependent on having first-class 
transport links, whether that be the electrification of the railway or whether it be expansion of Bristol Airport. And actually not expanding it would make precious little difference to climate change. It would be tokenistic. It would be uh, saying well, we're, all, we're all in favour of saving, saving the environment. But actually the, the change it's, itself would be minute, whereas the benefit for the economy of the southwest would be very significant. So let's not be tokenistic about this. Let's be realistic. Uh, are you still in favour of fracking? Uh, fracking, of course, absolutely. Including in your own constituencies, uh, well, you told me, not course, very long ago. Of course, ago. So if, if, if it were to be there, although in fact I think there's little likelihood of it because of the geology. But fracking, of course, is vastly better than oil. Okay. Vastly. Carla. Uh, um, I don't know where to start, really. <laughs> Opposing That's airport expansion water. is not tokenistic. If we doubled the number of passenger flights, which is what's proposed out of Bristol Airport, that would make it impossible for Bristol to meet its carbon neutral 2030 deadline, which is the one that we brought in in Bristol late last the year. The airport in says it will be motion. carbon neutral. It provides no evidence for how it's going to achieve that. And according to some of the reports they've published, that seems to not include the carbon emissions from the actual plane. That's a very important point to it. It doesn't include the reports I've seen, and I think Carlos, um, the other councillors have seen, is that it doesn't include the thing that's actually doing most of the polluting, which is the planes, Do the you aviation that, industry. I mean, the, the, uh, the protesters have got a lot of support, there's no doubt about that, uh, and uh, for drawing attention to this issue. But do you think they've been honest with people, perhaps working here in the southwest, where we make cars, we make aeroplanes, we make helicopters, about the cost that these measures would impose on their jobs. There would be costs in some ways and benefits in others. The Greens are proposing a Green New Deal which would involve a massive investment in sustainable technologies and industries which would create hundreds of thousands of new jobs. It's okay. about moving the jobs, not getting rid of them.